Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Thursday, May 20th, 2021. We're brought to you by the great people of today's dentistry, Sedation Dentistry. If you've got a lot of work that needs to be done, you want it done by a great dentist in a pain-free environment, Sedation Dentistry at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill is going to hook you up. 317-849-2933 is the number. Punch subscribe, hit like, ring the bell. Let's talk about sports, shall we, on this utterly beautiful Thursday in central Indiana. It's like summertime. Feels like July out there. I absolutely love it. We're going to talk about Indiana basketball and why we should be bullish about the Hoosiers seven and a half weeks into the Mike Woodson era. It's a little bit early to cast a bunch of judgments, but we can cast five, five reasons we should be very, very bullish about the Hoosiers. Then we're going to talk about the Colts offensive line, who I find hilarious. Braden Smith spoke to the media yesterday. Quentin Nelson earlier this week. Ryan Kelly earlier this week. When any of these guys talks to the media, I find it hilarious. I'll tell you why. The Pacers, they play the Wizards tonight. We'll talk about that toward the end of our 15 minutes together. Pacers in the play-in game at Washington, D.C. They take on the Wizards. The winner goes to the playoffs. They meet the top-seeded Philadelphia 76ers in the first round of the playoffs. The loser goes to the lottery. So if you win, you lose. And if you lose, you win. That's the way the NBA works. We'll talk about it in a little bit. The five reasons Indiana fans should be very, very bullish about the Hoosiers as we are now seven and a half weeks into the Mike Woodson era. Number five, Tamar Bates. Mike Woodson has done a terrific job of putting together the roster, and part of that roster is Tamar Bates, a five-star recruit out of the IMG Academy down in Bradenton, Florida. He signed with Texas, but when Shaka Smart left Texas to go to Marquette, he said, you know what? I'd like to play someplace else. And so Mike Woodson called, They did Zoom calls, all of that stuff. All of a sudden, the five-star kid out of IMG was coming to Indiana because the message that Mike Woodson brings to recruits resonates. He can build. He knows what it takes to play in the NBA. Indiana is a terrific place to play basketball. And if you're a part of the resurrection of Indiana basketball, you are going to be a, a hero in this state forever. Tamar Bates coming to Indiana shows that the message of the 63-year-old guy who hadn't had anything to do with college basketball since 1980, that's 41 years ago, but has coached in the NBA, played in the NBA, has coached for a bunch of terrific coaches, including Larry Brown. He played for Bob Knight. He knows what it takes. That message resonates, so Bates comes over. Number four, Jerome Hunter is gone. I got nothing against Jerome Hunter. All love to Jerome Hunter. I hope wherever he goes, he has a wonderful final two years of his college career. However, his being told to pack a box shows that a lapse of concentration is no longer going to be tolerated in Bloomington. We saw what Archie Miller did when he last showed a a lack of concentration and attention to detail. Archie Miller suspended him. I think it lasted a game. Right, They lost an overtime game at Illinois while Jerome Hutter was suspended. That didn't get, I guess, his full attention. And so Mike Woodson said, you know what? I don't need you. Goodbye. What does that do? Here's the thing that people say. And, and it's kind of a, a, the analogy might be inappropriate. But as you take over a department, there are people, I'm not necessarily one of these guys, but there are people who uh, advocate for managers to shoot a hostage. And it gets compliance with everyone else. As soon as you take, like a sales department, you fire somebody, you fire a troublemaker. Everybody else in the department snaps too, and they say, oh, this guy's serious, right? That's what I think Mike Woodson did. He waited for a player to step out of line and then whack, gone. And he will get compliance from the rest of the guys on that roster. It would have been nice to have a guy with Jerome Hunter's physical kind of skill set, right? Not a terrible shooter, a versatile defender, right? A pretty good rebounder, especially on the offensive end. But he had moments where his attention lapsed. He just kind of spun in circles defensively. And then offensively, there were times when it looked like he was running somebody else's offense. You had four guys running one offense and then Jerome Hunter running a different offense. You can't have that. And if he showed 
a lack of attentiveness in whatever form with Mike Woodson. Mike Woodson lopping him, that's a strong managerial move by Mike Woodson. And because Jerome Hutter's gone, others are going to bring a little bit more focus to detail and make sure that they don't become the next victim of, of their own immaturity. And that's what it is. That's like when people get fired, it's not a result of a manager necessarily being intolerant. It is the fault of the employee for not comporting to the expectation of the manager, right? For this is not Mike Woodson's fault that Jerome Hunter's no longer a Hoosier. This is Jerome Hunter's fault. Number three, Thad Mata being hired as the associate athletic director for men's basketball. Absolutely huge move. And I'll tell you why. It's not just bringing on board the bandwidth of, of Thad Mata, who's absolutely terrific as a head coach for Butler, Xavier, and Ohio State. It shows a confidence and a comfort with other brains in a room. By Mike Woodson. Mike Woodson wants smart people to be around him as he's the head coach at Indiana and Thad Mata is a really smart guy. Thad Mata from year two to year nine of his run at Ohio State was absolutely terrific. He had Ohio State rolling. He's going to come to Indiana. He's going to take some of the load off Mike Woodson, some of that college basketball know-how he's going to bring to bear because Mike Woodson hadn't been a part of college basketball for 41 years. Things have changed. There are demands upon a head coach that Mike Woodson is completely and blissfully unaware of. Thad Mata, he knows what those are. He comes to Bloomington as a tremendous resource for Mike Woodson. A lesser, less confident coach would have been threatened by Thad Mata's hire. Mike Woodson, not threatened. I think that that's a great reason to be bullish on the Hoosiers in 2021-2022. Number two, Trace Jackson Davis stuck around, right? It shows a belief that Woodson's message of development and accountability resonates. He, in a one-on-one -on -one meeting, Mike Woodson, sold Trace Jackson Davis on the concept of sticking around according to Trace Jackson Davis, who said he walked into the meeting believing that he was going to leave that he was going to declare for the draft. Might not have hired an agent, but he was going to declare. When he left, he called his dad, said, hey, you got to come down here and hear Mike Woodson out. I love his message. That tells you something about Mike Woodson and his ability to relate at the age of 63 to guys who are 18, 19, 20, 21. They get it. Woodson gets it. That is a terrific reason to feel really, really good about Indiana basketball. And number one, in seven weeks, Woodson has lost three starters, potentially, to transfer. Joey Brunk, Armand Franklin, and Al Durham, right? He has replaced those guys with Bates, who we talked about before, with Xavier Johnson, the transfer out of Pitt, with Michael Durr, the transfer out of South Florida by way of Virginia Tech, and Northwestern transfer Miller Cobb. So he has upgraded this roster despite the fact that he lost three really important players from that roster. Absolutely great stuff from Mike Woodson so far. Hadn't won a game yet, but he hadn't lost a game either. I love where Indiana basketball is headed. It fe and I love the interviews with Mike Woodson because Woodson just tells the truth. They're a little bit profane. I got no problem with that. I'm good with that. Using the S word, that's fine. You know what? Speak your mind in your way. I like it. You're not trying to be, you know, the CEO of a billion dollar corporation. You're a basketball coach, right? So be a basketball coach. Tell the truth. Be comfortable with yourself. Mike Woodson, I think his defining characteristic is that he is really, really comfortable with who he is. And that is a critical piece of leadership that Indiana has not had for the last 13 years. I think Kelvin Sampson was comfortable with himself. I don't think Tom Crean was comfortable with himself in Bloomington, and I don't think that Archie Miller was comfortable with himself in Bloomington. I think Mike Woodson is. All right, so that those are five reasons that you feel really good about Indiana basketball. I want to talk about the Colts' offensive line because when they talk to the media, I love it. These guys have no interest in what they have to say about anything. These guys are really smart, and they are really wired into each other. 
They believe that football is about collective effort. They're not prima donnas. They're not divas. That's a, they aren't blowing their own horn. When Quentin Nelson and Braden Smith over the last couple of days were asked questions about their legacy or their being an, a, a Pro Bowl player in Smith's case and the legacy in the case of Nelson, their eyes glazed over. And, and even though Nelson was asked twice about his legacy as a potential legacy, I mean, what is he, three years in? As a left guard, he kind of rolled his eyes and then sort of smiled, but it wasn't a smile of happiness. It was a smile of anger. I dug that. These guys are kind of like, have you ever seen A Beautiful Mind? The Ron Howard movie with Russell Crowe, who plays John Nash, who, genius, right? Uh, an unbelievable genius invented this law. They call it uh, the Nash Equilibrium. All right, it's kind of a game theory deal. And, and what it is, is uh, that the people playing a game, uh, it, it's very complicated. I won't get into it. I'll bore you with it. However, in the movie, you've got John Nash and three guys. They're in a bar. They're drinking beers. And there are five beautiful women. Or five women. One, stunning. The other four, mm, pretty normal looking. So John Nash understands that the four of those guys, if they all target the hottie, they have no chance. They're going to they're gonna eliminate each other, and they're going to alienate the other four women because they'll see that the, these four guys are all going strong to the hottie. So what John Nash proposes to his genius friends from Princeton is ignore the hottie and go after the average to good-looking women at the expense of the hottie. Because we were getting the hottie anyway. So let's go after the other four and ignore the hottie, and we all get dates. That's genius. That's cooperation. That is what this offensive line is. They care more about each other than they care about individual glory. And it's fantastic. Now, you can't have a football team made up of just that, right? You need wide receivers who are divas. You got to have an o Odell Beckham Jr. You got it. Those guys get paid by the catch, by the touchdown, right? Offensive linemen are paid kind of collectively. They're graded individually, but it's about how many sacks did the line allow, right? How many yards did your running game manage through the holes created by the offensive line? So it's, it's a little bit, the offensive line has to be more wired collectively than wide receivers, and you really need both. But it's so much fun to see that offensive line when they're interviewed by the media, kind of like, oh, God. And then as soon as, like, Quentin Nelson's done, they say, okay, thanks, Quentin. Boom. He's out of the frame. He's goners. He has no interest in talking to the media. He is completely bored by what he thinks and what he has asked. I love it. It's a completely different world with those guys. Let's talk about the Pacers for a minute. Pacers, three and a half point underdogs tonight. The over-under is 237 and a half. I'm taking the over, and I'm taking the Wizards. I don't think that the Pacers can play at that level for a second consecutive game. They played great basketball offensively against the Hornets, in large part because the Hornets' defense absolutely stunk on ice. I don't think the Wizards are coming with that kind of attitude tonight. I think the Wizards are going to try to stake a claim to this game early and that the Pacers, their chance is to hold on tight early, push the tempo, establish the tempo, and hope that they can, uh, in, in a lot of ways, dominate the Wizards through that 48 minutes. If they let their foot off the gas for a second, Russell Westbrook and the Wizards are going to come back and beat their ass. And that's just the way it is. We'll see what happens tonight. I think the Pacers have about a 1-6 in six chance of winning this game. I think they lose this game despite the fact that, like, the ESPN predictor thing says that the majority of the time the Pacers would win this game. The Wizards won all three games in the regular season. I think they win tonight. That's going to help the Pacers in the draft order. I hope that they win. I'll be rooting for them, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Tomorrow morning, we'll talk all about it. 6 o'clock on Facebook Live, bright and early, right? And then immediately thereafter on YouTube, or YouTube, I cannot wait to talk to you then.